The Essence of Meditation, A Simple Method Essentially, meditation focuses attention on your inner self which is your primary reality. It counters the tendency of people to think that what lies outside is their primary reality. Meditation brings focus to your inner world where it truthfully belongs. Meditation shifts your attention away from the clamoring demands of a complicated world. By meditating regularly, you can continue living an engaged life in the material world, but that world is no longer center stage. It is now in its proper context as your secondary reality. Meditation creates a tranquil inner space where you can become aware of the subtle aspects of yourself that until now have been obscured by the noise and clutter of the world and the sometimes vexatious people living in it. In this space, your intuition grows stronger, revealing to your conscious mind a rich stream of subtle but powerful knowledge. This knowledge is like the water that germinates the seeds of enlightenment that already lie buried in fertile soil, deep within you. Meditation is heightened awareness without the mental chatter. At its core, the essence of meditation is simply heightened awareness, no mental chatter. It is really no more complicated than that. At your most fundamental, you are pure consciousness living in a physical body. The layers of social learning that build up from the time you were a baby, come to obscure that pure consciousness, but you can re-establish it through an act of conscious will. Try it now, try becoming consciously aware that you are conscious. Try it for just a few seconds and cease the train of thought that probably runs incessantly through your mind. There, pure awareness, no compulsive thinking. If you are like most people, you'll only be able to maintain this mindset for a few seconds before more thoughts come crowding into your consciousness. Learning to quiet the mind and keep it quiet for extended periods of minutes and hours is one of the most difficult and disciplined challenges anyone faces on the spiritual path. But face it you must if you are to progress, reassuring yourself that countless others who have gone before you have achieved it. This idea of consciousness about consciousness sounds too meta to be taken seriously by some. That is the ego not wishing to be seen in its proper perspective. The unavoidable truth is, anything that you can stand aside from and view from a distance is not the real you. Your ego is not the essence you came into this life with, and it is not what will go with you when you die. All you brought with when you entered this life and will go with when your life is over is the state of mind, the degree or level of consciousness that you have reached. That, and some intuitive understanding of the methods by which you raised your consciousness. Meta-awareness is therefore the ability to focus attention on that aspect of your total self that is able to step away from the stream of everyday thinking, that sense of egoic identity as a person with a name and a life situation. You step aside and observe that person with compassionate understanding, accepting the reality of your egoic self and meaning it no harm. But knowing that while it is real enough and necessary for day-to-day -day functioning, what is more real is the part that is doing the observing. It is more real because you cannot step out of that meta-awareness. The usefulness of this one piece of information cannot be overstated. It opens the way for anyone to meditate as they go about their daily tasks. For it to work, you do not need to be sitting lotus fashion with your legs folded a certain way that is difficult for many Westerners to do, especially for long periods. Regardless of your activity, maintain a mindset of heightened awareness without the mental chatter, and it will open up your mind to the intuitive insights that reveal the truth of your own inner nature. Is it really is that simple? Yes, may be difficult to believe if you have been taught that big ideas are complicated ideas. With Zen the opposite is true, the bigger the idea, the more simply it can be expressed. Here is the sequence of actions. Sit comfortably. Breathe rhythmically. Sit with your spine straight, but in a way that will not incline you to fall asleep. Sleep is unconsciousness while meditation is heightened consciousness. In your heightened state of awareness, focus your attention on your breathing, thinking of nothing else. Watch, feel the breath come in, hold, then release. Breathe deeply, from the diaphragm, drawing air towards the bottom of your lungs. With steady rhythm, breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. The oxygen that enters your blood has an immediately beneficial effect on you, giving you a sense of well-being. The oxygen is what the ancients thought of as prana, the life force that animates all things. Focus your awareness on a point behind the center of your forehead. Sometimes called third eye, the seat of the soul, 
or highest self, this is where to direct the conscious energy of your focused mind, invigorated by the heightened oxygen in your blood. Imagine that in this place is a diamond-like crystal the size of a marble. Imagine there is a whole universe contained in that crystal, a perfect, microcosmic copy of the macrocosm. Dwell on this tremendously empowering thought. Nothing is impossible, when you know you have the essence of the entire universe within you. Continuing to breathe deeply and rhythmically, now feel the crystal warming up. It's beginning to glow. The glow strengthens and becomes a radiant light, shining in all directions, becoming brighter, stronger, bathing your body and everything around you with a sustaining energy. This is an emanation from your true self, your highest self. As you bathe in its empowering glow, you might feel a powerful desire to incorporate this feeling into your day-to-day -day mindset, making it your default state of mind. As with traditional sitting meditation, you keep a single-minded awareness of your breathing as it fuels the visualized energy that is emanating from your third eye. Nothing else matters and nothing else exists for the time being. Counting sub-vocally on the out-breath. When starting with this meditation technique, before it has become established, begin with 10 repetitions. Each repetition takes about 10 seconds, so this initial session will last only about a minute and 40 seconds. With twice daily practice you will know when you can comfortably do 20 repetitions, then 30, 40, 50 then 60, which should take around 10 minutes. Or you can set a timer to remind you when the desired time has passed. 10 minutes is a good duration to work up to. Do the 10 minutes for 2 weeks until it becomes well established, then gradually increase the duration up to 20 minutes over the following weeks. Do 30 minutes if you can, but don't force it. This will undermine your willingness to continue with the meditation. It starts to look like hard work when it should seem like a welcome break. 20 to 30 minutes twice daily. Make a goal to meditate in this way for up to 30 minutes, twice a day. It might take months or years to reach this level and that is okay, it is important not to rush this process. In earlier times, people entered monasteries and adopted rigidly structured routines that instilled the required discipline. But monastic life is not a prerequisite. You can continue with your daily life provided you have sufficient self-discipline to do the meditation twice daily. Ask yourself honestly, do you have the self-discipline? If not you can acquire it, though it will involve making sacrifices. Discipline has its own rewards, it's an excellent way to start the day, likewise, ending the day with a session in the evening not long before bedtime sets you up for a good night's sleep. As you become well established with your meditation practice, you feel the benefits of stress reduction, less prone to anger, expanded awareness, intuitive insights, increased creativity, improved relationships and greater enjoyment of life and these may encourage you to meditate during the day. Just find a safe, comfortable place where you won't be disturbed. A final note about the practice of non-attachment. For beginners, the most difficult aspect of meditation are the distractions thrown up by the undisciplined mind that incessantly claims your attention like an unruly child. It is difficult not to jump like a grasshopper from one thought to another. No matter how interesting or important or disturbing these thoughts might be, when meditating it is important that you do not allow your attention to latch onto any of these thoughts. Imagine that they are like the loose pages of a newspaper blowing in the wind across an empty car park at night. You notice them emerge from the darkness. But instead of picking up a page to read, simply allow the wind to carry it away, back into the darkness with no further thought. Remind yourself that all worldly phenomena, like the news, is short-lived and soon forgotten. Practice what in Buddhism is called non-attachment. It is attachment to worldly things that is the primary cause of human suffering. Nothing is permanent so we are setting ourselves up to suffer if we become too attached to that which is temporary. Another way to look at this is to practice having low expectations. With these you will seldom if ever be disappointed and often be delighted. Non-attachment is the key to meditation. It is also the key to a contented, if not happy life in general. This concludes the How to Meditate section. Your ability to establish yourself in this meditation routine is the essential prerequisite for your cultivation of Zen practice.